Well, I'm Lorna Sass. I'm here in Brahm Cookware Shop in Sonoma Square, Sonoma, California, with a very, very old friend of mine. We go back, we figure, about 40 years, Paula Wilford. And I'm so excited to be interviewing her about her new book, Clay Pot Cooking, Mediterranean Clay Pot Cooking, in a shop, Brahm, that specializes in clay pots. Paula, tell us how you got into this clay pot cooking. Oh, I've been doing it for 50 years. I started my, bought my first clay pot in New York on 6th Avenue and 18th Street. In the shop Not in Morocco? No, I hadn't even been to Morocco yet. Bazaar de la Cuisine. I don't even think you remember it, but I went, I, I was working for Dione Lucas. She sent me down there to get something, and I saw this beautiful pot that looked like something you'd, you'd sit on, you know, it was a cushion, it looked like a cushion, it was a triperie. So I said to the woman, what's that? And she said, it's for tripe. I said, what's tripe? <laughs> I mean, I didn't know, but I bought it because it was so beautiful. It had a tiny little opening, and that little opening is where you put all the tripe and everything and the juices and the meat juices and everything that you want to cook with it. You seal it up with flour and water, and then you bake it like 12 hours, and miracles happen in the food. Well, that didn't happen quite right away. First, because I didn't know what to do with it because I didn't even know about tripe. But and when I went off to Morocco, because I went and lived there for seven years, I learned about tagines. And that's where I really got interested in what makes food taste good in Morocco. Part of it is the way it's cooked. It's cooked very slowly, top of the stove, what's called bottom-up heating, cooking. That means that the, the heat comes from the bottom, slightly glazes the food as it produces warmth, then heat, and then finally moisture. And then in this triangular top, cone type top, there's a circulation of moisture. There's also the fact that all the food is piled up in it from the most, uh, the hardest food to cook is at the bottom, the lighter food like maybe um, eggplant or uh, zucchini, which doesn't take very long, are on top. And they are piled up and it's like a portable oven. It just cooks slowly. Well, of course, what's happened in Morocco in the last 10 or 20 years is that women have moved into the cities where they can't sort of, you know, they go to work like everybody else. A lot of them have switched to the pressure cooker, which where you come in. Yeah. But um, in America, people want to, if they're going to do Moroccan cooking, they really want to do it the way uh, the Moroccans used to do it and still do it in the countryside. And that is to prepare it in these beautiful clay pots that are on top of the stove and then, of course, bring it to the table, lift off the cover. It's a lot Great of drama, drama, tremendous amount of drama. And it's a beautiful way to cook and to serve. So clay pot cooking goes back to ancient times, right? Oh, it's, it's one it's of the, the most first. ancient ways. I mean, just think of it. They only skewered meat, but you couldn't eat a lot of it because it really needed to cook. But they didn't know about cooking, but eventually they worked up the idea of, of a bowl, water, boil, meat. <laughs> We're talking about a slow braise, yes. but stovetop. But it simulates oven cooking in that the pot is sealed. Yes, and there, well, there are other So it's every country in the world has a clay pot that produces food that pleases the cook who needs to please the person who's eating. For example, up until I learned about umidieras, which I'll tell you what they are in a minute, you convinced me that the best way to cook risotto was in a pressure cooker. And I even wrote that in my Grains and Greens book. You absolutely convinced me. But I didn't know about the umidieras. The potter the cook and the gourmand are in a triangle in every country in the world. And in Italy, where risotto is important, the potter tells, no, excuse me, the cook tells the potter, what she needs. I, need to, I need to hold in a little bit more moisture because if I can hold in a little bit more moisture, my risotto will be creamier and it will stay warmer and I will be able to get the right texture. The potter creates that little indentation there. And that is the reason that the risottos in Italy are always better than anywhere else. And every Italian woman who makes risotto cooks it in an umidiera. How fascinating. I didn't know that, but writing this book, 
Yes. I went around the Mediterranean. I learned how different cooks working with potters over centuries create pots for the kind of dishes that please the people of the area. And it also has to do with what grows in an area, etc., etc. Well, Paula, I've always thought of you as a cook anthropologist because one of the things you've always done since the beginnings of time <laughs> is get into those kitchens with the women and cook with them and really understand the cultural backpinnings of the food. And that's what you've always done so well. Well, wait till I tell you what I do now. All right. Okay. I used to do that. And I used to even go and learn their languages enough to learn about the food. And I specialize in the Mediterranean, so that's my beat. But I'm a little older now, and I'm rewriting the Moroccan cookbook, and there's something called YouTube. <laughs> and there are Moroccan women speaking in Arabic, or actually it's called Daria. And I know the food words, I know the names of the dishes, and I am watching and I am finding dishes that I didn't know about. Now remember, I lived there for seven years, so I knew a little bit in my book. My couscous knows a good food from Morocco, it's going to be Prince in 73, but I still needed new stuff. And I'm watching these women, and it puts me on the trail. But I don't have to leave home. I can just make phone calls. <laughs> and with Skype and email, I... You're, you're a technological wizard. <laughs> That's great. Well, I don't know that, but it's really yeah. been, it's been very creative. And I don't mind giving away my secrets because the world is changing. The I mean, you know, and, and they're not... A lot of those women aren't there anymore, God bless them, but they're not around because I liked the old women. There's always the story, these, uh, these food writers are always saying about me, oh, she'll climb a mountain to get, to get a recipe. Yeah, you tell great stories. Yeah, but it's, it, the thing is, is that those women aren't around anymore and the younger generation, they need this YouTube as much as I do. <laughs> yeah. Well, would you like to show us a little bit more in the shop prom? Um, perhaps show us some of the different... Well, okay, but here, yeah. now you see this? This is an Alsatian Beckeroff. For chacroot? No, it's no. Alsatian and it's for, actually, because they put a pig's foot in it, so therefore it needs that shape. A pig's foot has to sit in here along with all the other vegetables and ingredients, <coughs> the cabbage and whatever. Um, these are all done with earthenware. On the outside, it breathes better. And there's a control, there's a control of heat. And everything on this side of the room is best cooked on top of the stove. I know people think, oh, it should go in the oven. Yeah, it can go in the oven, but this, these are ovens. In a sense, a pot like yeah. this becomes an oven. Yeah. And it's economical, and it makes food taste better. So a lot of these are, are just, you know, ordinary uh, cocottes, as they call them, marmites in which food cooks slowly and beautifully. These down there below, you have a you have a more shallow size. So what would you so make in there, paella? I might make a, not paella, but an arrozes, because paella is really better with a slanted sides outside where moisture can boil off quickly. But here, this is an arroz where you want to keep the moisture in. Therefore, it's got straight sides. And the rice cooks differently, but you still are able to produce what's called the cremata, that black part at the bottom, which, you know, is so good. Um, Paula, we're going to yes. take a little break, okay. and we'll come back in a moment. Okay.